I'm here in our garage and uh, sitting next to or kneeling next to what is a homemade bottom heat propagation system. I set this up a few years ago and had some decent success. I feel like I've made a lot of upgrades on it. So in this video, I'm going to go into detail about what the theory is behind it, how it was set up, and maybe it's something that is of interest to you or maybe not. Stick around. I'm going to start first with an explanation of bottom heat propagation in the first place. And so f just bear with me if you already know what this is all about. But the basic idea is certain plants, uh, woody perennial plants, shrubs, vines, trees, and the like, certain ones will respond positively uh, in propagating when heat is applied to the, the bottom of the cut dormant stick that you've taken. So for example, here is a grape cutting. Now let me explain that also I just took, the, took these cuttings two days ago, so nothing is rooting just yet. But if you take a dormant cutting sometime in the fall, all the way through till uh, late winter, early spring, and you warm the root zone to roughly 70 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit, that really helps stimulate rooting. It's not critical, but for some plants it's very helpful. So here we are in mid-February, and outside Tonight it's going to hit around 1 degree Fahrenheit, uh, quite cold, and in this garage, this bed is now holding a steady temperature in, uh, around the low 70s. It's on its way up to 74 Fahrenheit, which is the target temperature, and so now I'm going to explain how I've set up this space to do that. This is taking up a 2 foot by 8 foot space in our garage, and I'm facing south, and so when light comes in, uh, it does get onto these plants or onto these cuttings, but that's not critical for this process. The critical bit is warm root zone and cool top. Um, and so this garage is an unheated garage, so it gets down into the low 30s, maybe even below freezing periodically, but that's just fine as long as the roots are warm. And I basically framed out a very simple setup in here with some scrap lumber to hold everything together. And the first course of what I laid down was a set of insulated fire bricks. Now it could have been foam board, uh, could have been even potentially, I guess, dried hay or dried sawdust, something to insulate and decouple this whole system from the cold, uh, uninsulated garage floor below it. And then I laid down a layer of greenhouse poly that was folded over twice as an old scrap piece. Uh, and then on top of that, I laid in a bag of perlite, a four cubic, a four cubic foot bag of perlite. Once that was spread out evenly, I then started to lay in a coarse builder's sand. Uh, so it's a washed sand that I got from a box store. Put in uh, nine bags of those, so 350 pounds of that material. So that's my thermal mass, and that's also going to help facilitate the rooting. And into that sand, I wove a warming wire. Now in the description, I'm going to provide some details and links to some of these materials if they're of interest to you. One thing I want to say, though, at this point right now, if you're watching this video and this seems compelling, that's great. But I want to make sure that if you're just getting into propagating on a small scale or home scale, I would dissuade you from investing in all of these electric components and perlite and sand and all that start small and simple i'll link in the description to some other very very low-tech ways of propagating hardwood uh, cuttings but to be able to do around a thousand hardwood cuttings of high value plants in the winter months is pretty worthwhile for me as a nursery so that's why this is happening now into uh, so they've got the sand layer laid out with the heating wire woven through there the upgrade that I've made this year over uh, past years is I didn't use a wire mesh to lock the wire uh, down. I found that when the plants rooted, it would get caught in that mesh and they, the roots would rip. So I just skipped that and simply used bricks to pin it down. And then I capped that whole thermal bank of sand with another bag of perlite. Once that basic layout was set, I took a temperature probe element and pushed it down to the very center of the bed, roughly right in the center, right around where the bottom of the sand is, which is around where the bottom of each of my cuttings will be. 
and I plug that into this temperature controller that I could set to 74 degrees. Right now it's at 71, but it's creeping on its way up. And the heating wire itself has a temperature control, but it's pretty coarse. Uh, and I, I think it's worth the additional investment in a heat controller. This can be used for other applications, other bottom heat applications, seed starting and the like. Um, the challenge, the issue, I guess, is that the heating cable and this device cost $100 in total. And the perlite and the sand cost $100 in total. And perlite and sand will easily be usable in potting mix and out in nursery beds in the future. Uh, so it's not a wasted material. Um, and this heating cable and this temperature probe can be reused over and over again. So that is useful, but it's just something to consider. Now, in this end of the bed, uh, once I wetted down all that material, and in fact, I just put snow on top and then collected some rainwater or some melting snow to pour on that. I don't want to have a lot of nutrient in this. I just simply want loose, well-drained material, but it needs to be moist. And then I could start putting my cuttings in. So two days ago, I started loading this up. I've got around, well, so far around 450 cuttings in here. They do not need a lot of space because the whole point of this is simply to stimulate really uh, fast uh, beginnings of roots and then once they start rooting out to move them on. Hopefully the timing is such that I can move these out to high tunnels or into the garden itself. But I've got black currants. Black currants, willow and elderberry definitely don't need bottom heat to uh, get going. But I found that this far corner, this side was quite cold. I think the wire just didn't get all the way over here, so I figured I'd put in some high-value black currants that don't really need a lot of stimulation to root. Then we get into sea berry, a very high-value plant, tons of demand there, uh, all sorts of different lengths and thicknesses to continue to learn what is the best way to root them. Then there's some grapes, um, so seedless concord that we've got here. They really like some bottom heat in order to root well, so we'll see. Then some experiments that I'm trying this year. I've got Carmine Jewel, which is a dwarf sour cherry, which I know roots very well from root cuttings. And so a follow-up video on all of this will be uh, when I fill out more of this space with root fragments of sea kale, of shipmass black locust, of dwarf sour cherry to stimulate the, the root development and then the shooting of those. We'll talk about that in another video. But for now, I'm trying dormant topwood of Carmine Jewel, all sorts of different thicknesses and thinnesses to see what works. More sea berry, more grapes. I've got some tay berry, some yasta berry. I've even got some Japanese plums. I've heard that they're okay from hardwood. Uh, so we'll see. Well, I'll just share notes on what works and what doesn't. And then some more sea berry to cap it off. And as a rooting hormone, all I used was uh, raw honey warmed up in water. I'm just leave it sitting on this bed. I pour some into a glass and use that for little blocks of cuttings here or there. Um, one cup of water to one tablespoon of honey. That helps stimulate rooting and it's not toxic and nasty like the other stuff. And so that's the first set of uh, plants getting rooted in there. Okay, it covers enough for this first video talking about the upgrades here. Uh, some other things I've done is I put some doubled over bubble uh, foil wrap to give a little bit of a thermal break from the outside there to insulate the sides and the back end that's against that cold wall. Really want to see if I can get the insulation between the fire bricks, the perlite under, and the perlite on top to help keep that band, that 350 pounds of sand, nice and warm without drawing and wasting a ton of electricity. As it is, this heat wire draws out around 140 watts when it's running. So I can heat 16 square feet of propagation space or up, upwards to a thousand plants at a time in exchange for 150 watts. Uh, in an ideal world, I would just be using compost to do that heating, but I've learned that the compost is very variable and it also has a lot of gases in it, a lot of excess nutrient, and sometimes that rots the, the cuttings before they have a chance to root. I'll share some more updates as we go, certainly as this first block starts to root out. So again, that was two days ago. I'll check in about a week or so, 
Once we get a thaw, I'll be going out to dig up roots to be doing uh, root warming to trigger some callusing and growth. And I'll take some other cuttings. Basically, I want this to be at full capacity within a week or so. And then once these root out, I can take them out and replace them with another band or another block of cuttings. So that all until late March, early April, this is at peak production of stimulating rooting. So that's my little experiment for now. Promising results a few years ago, some nice simple upgrades, more insulation uh, simplified in some ways. And thanks for watching. Let me know if you have questions. And again, if you're on the fence of whether or not you think you should do this, don't do it. Uh, why buy new stuff that you don't have to? Try it with simple uh, other ways to go. But if you already have rooted lots of plants or you're thinking about becoming a nursery and you want to invest in some things, this might not be the worst direction to take. And thanks for watching.